Welcome to Option Trades today. I'm Tony the Bat Batista and I've got a trade idea for you today. Well, my last Option Trade Today podcast of 2022 because it is December 29th and the end is here. Now, the end is here also means that there's a lot of earnings coming um, in the first quarter in January and early February. So a lot of the stocks that I trade normally are going to have earnings. So I do my best to avoid them. Today, let's take a look at what we're looking at here. Even the S&Ps are up 65 handles. That's 65 points. That's a big, almost 2% move in the market, 1.72. And the NASDAQ is up almost 2.5%, uh, up 272. Now, you know what happens when the market goes higher. Volatility usually goes lower. Now, yesterday, if you were watching the market, the market was going lower, even the S&Ps were going lower, NASDAQ, Russell, and the Dow all going lower, and volatility was actually going lower also. A sign for possibly a little bit of capitulation in the market to the downside? Well, as, as a Monday morning quarterback would have it, today you see the market a lot higher. So yes, that was a good tell. It's also a good tell when you've had a sustained move in one direction. As you can see here in the E-mini S&Ps over the last couple of days, we had the market moving lower the last three or four days, and you finally got volatility uh, capitulating, not going higher as the market was going lower. I think that was a good um, tell in the market. And as it certainly happened, um, the market went higher. So for today, you're going to find a little bit of a, of a, of a problem looking for new trades with high implied volatility, no earnings. And if you're not going to an ETF, which I don't feel like going into right now with Q's, uh, having a IV rank in the market going higher today of 29, they would be the best one. IWM, I think, is still in the teens. IV rank of 13, that would be the worst one. And SPY would be somewhere in the middle with an IV rank of 22. If I had to pick one of those, I would probably go into the queues if I was looking for a trade. Maybe next week um, we'll, we'll look for that. What am I going to look at? What kind of trade am I going to look for today? As you can see here, I had my list to all futures. Um, I could change that to the to the bat watch list if that's what I want to look at, or I could go to the 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 most watched over the over the last um, uh, hour. These are the equities where everybody else is trading. This is something that Scott comes on our show um, and talks about. But I'm going to kind of find a trade here um, in a stock that does not have earnings. Um, that has okay liquidity, not the best. I'm talking about Airbnb, A-B-N-B, A-B-N-B. Um, Airbnb today is up $2.70. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to this stock. I'm going to this stock um, because I got an email from a customer. Customer says, listen, I watch your option trades today um, all the time. Uh, you seem to use a lot of buying power. It is easier. Uh, to find trades with a higher probability of profit using more buying power than it is to find trades um, that have less buying power in them. It's just unfortunate the way the market is. It rewards using more buying power and having a larger account than a smaller account. But he said, hey, I have a smaller account and I've got an assumption in Airbnb where I want to be you know, slightly, I want some upside. I want some upside poten potential. Um, but I don't want to use a lot of a lot of buying power, but I'm also afraid that the stock might go lower. So I'm like, well, you can't have it both ways, but I will give you a trade um, that you could pick either one or both of them combined. So let's take a look at this. Uh, Ivy rank at 27, good, not great, but as you can see here, I have the Tastyworks IVR uh, high low here. That's the IVR, the implied volatility high low. You can get this on your charts by just clicking on the uh, uh, indicators here, and it's the first one in this list. You add it to the list, um, and you click uh, save, and you have that now on the bottom of your uh, platform, the Tastyworks platform, if you want to get that. Um, you can see Airbnb has gone lower. I can certainly understand why he would want, uh, you know, as a contrarian, I would do that. I'm not like crazy about the Airbnb model, especially with um, uh, love and other uh, carriers. Um, if you're going to go from the macro view, um, not being able to travel doesn't really help the Airbnb model. But you know what? Stock's up $2.70. 
also makes it a little bit harder to get long in there. So I'll show you what I told him I think he should do. And I did put on the trades because, man, if you're going to talk about it, you might as well trade it. Here's the Airbnb. It has earnings coming uh, February 21st. The IV rank is good, not great. But again, he has an assumption on it, and it fits our parameters. Decent implied volatility. Okay markets, not not the best, 10 cents wide, a little bit more. So what would be a normal trade that I would do for him? Okay, um, limited amount of buying power, that's the key. Bullish bias. I said, you know what? You could take a look at buying one of the 80, uh, 85 puts, um, selling two of the 85, uh, 80 puts. Now, you know I, I love... Um, uh, to to um, do ratio spreads. This is going to use a lot more buying power, though, $4,000. But if I go risk one to make one, I'm going to $5 wide here. I'll go $10 wide here. You can see that we could put this on in February, buying one of the 85 puts, selling two of the 80 puts, buying one of the of the 70 puts. You can do it for a total of 64 cent credit, um, and that is exactly... Um, where I did my put side of this spread. Now, I'm going to do both sides here. This is called a bat wing trade. It's a little bit um, a little bit tight, uh, meaning I'm, I'm not that far away from the, the market here. I'm right at the market. And that's because he wanted to have long delta. This has six positive long deltas on it. It creates about a dollar uh, and 40 cents in theta decay. Um, beta weighted deltas to the S and P, even though it's six and a half uh, Airbnb uh, deltas, it only equals about one and a half SPY deltas. There's a good correlation here of 0.66 with SPY. Um, my max loss is $433. How did we get to that? Um, you're long the 80 85 put spread one time, and you're short the 80 70 put one time. Well, if the stock were to go to zero, this 80 85 put spread would be worth five dollars. This 80 70 put spread that you're short, you're selling that to finance um, the trade. Uh, you did it for 64 cents. It's 70 cents right now as a as a mid price, but you did it for 64 cents. Your um, your your max loss at that time would be the five dollars plus the 64 cents for around four dollars and 35 cents as your um, as your buying power and your your max loss. Now it says max profit here of 564 dollars because that's your five dollar long put spread plus the 64 cents. So I say it, risking one $436 to make one $564. Really, what are we looking to make on a trade like this? I'd be looking to make somewhere between 50 cents and a dollar. On this trade alone, as a standalone trade, I'd be looking to make 50 cents to a dollar. I promised everybody that I would show them what it looks like on the curve view, so I'm going to do that here. Here I just clicked on the curve view uh, in the Tastyworks platform. The green is all the positive. The red is all the negative. If you have no risk to the upside, then this has to be a positive delta trade. You get all of those Greeks right down here on the bottom. All right, so that would be one trade that I would tell him to make. But he said, you know what? I want to have upside, and it doesn't look like this gives me a lot of upside. If I'm right directionally, I only make the credit I received from this trade, and that's if I hold it for the next 50 days. I get it, $64 isn't a lot of money, but we're only using $440 worth of buying power. So on a percentage basis, it's not that bad. So I said, okay, I put that trade on because that's your positive delta trade, and now I'm going to give you something where you're going to have to – you're gonna have to kind of, uh, you're gonna have to have to look at it a little bit. Now remember, the stock is trading right at eighty-five dollars, so there are no dollar-wide strikes here. So you're forced the first strike out of the money uh, would be the ninety strike. So he wants upside. So let's buy the ninety ninety-five call spread one time. Now I could do that for the sixty-four cent credit that I received. I would have a dollar. Um, let's just call it a, a, a dollar. 20-ish um, that I would be paying for this trade plus the $400 and 
$440 in buying power that I'm using. So you'd be using around $600 in buying power. But one way, that but that would give me upside. I'd have this long call spread and that short put spread would be a double long. We would call that a stupid. And if you're going to do a trade that usually uh, is being, a uh, market maker calls a stupid, meaning it's directionally long on one side, directionally long on the other side, or directionally short on one side, directionally short on one side. It's a stupid, it's not really, um, you're really looking for alpha, you're really kind of pushing the envelope here. I say, how about this? We do the same thing. We do another ratio spread to the upside. Now I know what you're thinking here. I've done these before where, you'll, where I'll say, hey, if I'm doing a call broken wing butterfly, then I must be bearish because it has, it has short delta, and you're right. It has the same six short deltas, even though I'm $5 away from where the stock is. That's because there's call skew in Airbnb. So the call skew in Airbnb allows me to go further away from the money and still have the same basic delta as the at-the-money spread that I did uh, previously. Now, I'm only getting $0.35 cent credit, so that's a total of around a dollar, a dollar, three, four, or five in credit for the whole trade. But I don't need any additional buying power. My buying power is already being used up. As a matter of fact, my buying power will go down by the amount of credit that I receive on this trade. So now I'm using around $400 in buying power. This trade has a 79% pop. The trade previously had around a 79% pop. It has a delta of negative six. The other one had a positive six, so I'm completely even. I've got a theta decay of now not just $1.30 from this trade, but $1.40 from the last trade. So I've got about $2.70 in theta decay for that same amount of buying power, that same amount of max profit, all things being equal, being exactly the same. So I put on both of these trades. I got filled at... Uh, 39 cents on the call spread. I got filled at 64 cents on the put spread for a total of a dollar three on the $400 in buying power um, that I'm using with with around a 65 percent pop on the overall trade. Now we could take a look at this trade on the curve view also, and you see it's going to look just the opposite um, as we had just saw a moment ago on this call side. I have, um, I have no downside risk on the trade. This is the downside, and I have upside risk. Um, again, you have to say, remember he's slightly bullish. This is a completely delta neutral trade. Let's put things in perspective. The chances on this stock going to 100, which is his break even, let's go to probably being in the money, um, is about 19%. So I've got, if his assumption is correct, that's what I'm taking into, into consideration here, I've got about an 80% or greater chance to make some money on this trade. Now, if the stock goes a little bit higher because I've had both sides on, it's going to move a little bit, it's going to move a little bit, a little bit slower. So what am I looking to make on this overall trade? About a dollar, a dollar 25 50 cents on the low side, even though I'm doing both sides here, but around the dollar. What do I want to happen? I want the stock to go sideways to slightly higher. I do not want a big move lower, obviously, and I don't want a big move higher. I want a nice sustained little move. I want uh, in the next 25 days or so for Airbnb to be right around $90, and this trade will be all money. All right, listen, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this um, uh, option trades today where I use a lot less buying power. Listening to your comments that you put on uh, YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube um, or you're listening to it on uh, your podcast, wherever you get your podcast, be it either Apple or Android. Um, I appreciate your support. I appreciate your support all year long. Um, we're going to need you in 2023 to keep growing and to keep this great content. So please open up an account uh, at tastyworks.com and take advantage of all of those perks. And to everyone out there, a very happy new year.